Hey everyone, this is Kirk here again at OptionAlpha.com and welcome back to a jam-packed video tutorial. We're going to cover all types of different strategies today that we have traded just this past Friday and cover a lot of trades. It was probably one of the more active days I've had in the past four to five months and really it's all because you just have to be patient and picking your entry points. And I love this chart up here or this picture up here of the cat waiting for the mouse to come out of the hole because sometimes as traders, I feel like a lot of people will put their paw inside that hole and dig around and try to find and find and find. And they'll kind of overanalyze a lot of the stocks that they're trading. So the analysis paralysis, you just look at it so much that you basically break it down in your mind. And as traders, what we need to learn to do, especially as options traders, is be patient and wait for our spots. So when the market is rallying and it's just going up slightly every day, have no fear, at some point, the market's gonna turn around like it did on Friday. We have a huge sell-off on Friday. Everything basically sold off, volatility jumped, option premiums swelled. And so you have to have money available and ready to then deploy at that point and open a lot of positions. And you'll see today in the video tutorial that we're gonna go over that we had a lot of new positions that we put on just this Friday because it was just a great opportunity. You can't back away from these types of markets and opportunities. So hopefully you stick with me through this video tutorial. I know it's a lot. Uh, as always with all the tutorials we do here on optionalpha.com, these are sent just to our members first and then posted publicly on YouTube about five to seven days later. And so if you're on YouTube now and you're seeing some of these alerts, you probably won't get an opportunity to to make some of these trades at the same prices because you're too late and you didn't sign up for the membership. So I want to go over not just the opening trades here today, but I want to, I'll want to i go over these in a second, but I want to go over some of the closing orders that we did have today as well because of the sell-off, we actually had an opportunity to take profit on a lot of different securities that we already had on for the books. So I want to go over some of these and then I'll get to opening trades. The first one is that we bought back the INTC or Intel vertical call spread that we had and we bought it back for an eight cent debit. So Again, this is a February contract, so we still got plenty of time between now and February, but we've made basically all we can make on this trade. So we sold it for a little over 30 cents in credit, took back a nice profit of $26 per spread. So we sold five spreads, $26 per spread that we made in profit. But again, we're not gonna hold this thing all the way through expiration for a measly eight cents. So we're gonna get rid of the trade. Now let's talk about why and I talk about this a lot in the free course that we have on optionalpha.com, but why we hold all of our risk defined positions until they show a profit. And Intel is the perfect example of this. We had the 26, 27 February call spread. And you'll notice that here's the 26 level, here's the 27 level, so those are where our strikes are. And you'll notice that if you were trading any type of option system where you had some sort of stop loss, quote unquote, that would get you out of the trade if it went sideways, then you would have made or had a loss on this trade that would have been potentially almost a full loss because at one point Intel jumped significantly right after earnings. And so, or right before earnings, it jumped significantly. And so it would have gone in the money. You probably would have been hit out of your stop loss. but. Again, we're trading risk-defined trades, and if we keep our trade size small, we know our probabilities, then eventually we give the market an opportunity to have some cyclicality. You can see that it just turned all the way back over and went back down. So now it gives us a great opportunity to exit the trade and take a nice profit on the trade. So again, I just wanna drive home the point that with your risk-defined trades, so your spreads, your butterflies, things like that, iron condors, you have to let them on until they show a profit. If they don't show a profit, then you are safe to let them go all the way to expiration, let the market have as much time as it needs to work itself out and the probabilities to work themselves out because that's the way you make money in this business is not by taking these, these stop losses and getting yourself out of the position early. You're just gonna kill yourself with reoccurring stop losses. The other trades that we had, the two verticals that we got rid of, which are these two on X, which is US Steel and XLF, which are the financials. We had two put verticals. So on X, US Steel, we had the 28.25 put spread. We sold that back to the market for 190 credit, took in $34 per spread. And same thing with XLF, just huge sell off, obviously, with the rest of the market. Sold that position back to the market. We had the 23.21 put spread, sold it back for 146 and took in a profit of $42 per spread. Again, if you remember from all these video tutorials, 
when we take positions that are these debit spreads, it's purely a 50-50 bet. So when the market gives us an opportunity to make some money on these trades, when the market sells off quickly, we want to take that profit early because over time, we're just going to make a 50-50 bet if we let it go all the way to expiration. So the way that we jumpstart that and the way that we break that cycle of this zero-sum game that a lot of traders talk about is by taking these profits when you get an opportunity. So don't be greedy. Take a nice little profit. $34 per spread is a nice profit, covers commissions, covers everything for this, and breaks that 50-50 cycle long term. The last one that we got rid of was our Starbucks vertical put spread. Again, we had a nice little credit spread on Starbucks that we entered just a couple days ago. It was the 72 and a half 70 put spread and Starbucks jumped up. So we bought it back for 35 cent debit and made $30 on the trade per spread that we sold. So again, practicing what we preach here, we tell people with your risk defined trades, you exit them at 50% or 75%. That's the target range of your max potential profit. So in this case, we sold the spread for 65 cents. That's the most we can make, $65. We bought it back then for $35, so we made a nice little $30 profit. That's about 50% of our max potential gain. Again, we go to the chart of Starbucks, and you'll see that it had a nice jump up, and that's all we wanted to do was jump up. And so as Starbucks jumped from the base where we had sold it, we had a nice little profit, so you take the profit. You don't assume that Starbucks is going to continue to run higher from here. Market cyclicality might turn it right back over, so you want to jumpstart that great positive cycle of getting nice high probability trades and banking profits you got to move those into the hopper all right so now that we've covered the closing trades let's go over some of the opening trades and i want to start with our iron condor in dia and this one really just too good of an opportunity to pass up again iron condors are hard to trade because you need a lot of things you need liquidity you need high volume in the underlying options and then you need high implied volatility so they're not as easy as some people think to trade and especially with this high, highly traded ETF, the DIA, the Dow, the Diamonds, then it allows us to move a little bit further away from the market because it's highly liquid. So made a great opportunity to sell a couple iron condors in Dow for March. So in this case, I wanna go over exactly what we did with this iron condor since we don't have too many of these, but we sold the March contracts, which are designated here, and we have two sides to this trade. So we sold the 165, 167 calls, and then we went down below the market and sold the 151, 149 puts. Now, you'll notice that in both cases, the width of my strikes is $2 between the calls, the 165, 167, and $2 between the 151 and 149. So it's an even iron condor. It's not unbalanced or broken or anything like that. It's very even. In total, we took in a nice $65 credit. So it was a pretty pretty good credit per, per iron condor that we sold. So we took in a couple hundred dollars of credit here, and that's gonna give us a nice wide iron condor to work with. So again, I'm gonna go to the chart of DIA, but remember, our strikes are, our first strikes are 165 and 151. So you'll notice on the chart of DIA that the first thing that we always look at is implied volatility. And you'll notice how high it is. It's in the 81st percentile. Well, obviously it's really high because the Dow had just a horrible, horrible last couple of days. And so this really helped solidify this iron condor position that we had. It helped widen out the strikes so that we can move far away from the market and collect a nice fat premium. So by doing that, we actually moved to the 165 and 151 levels. So you'll notice on the chart that 151 is all the way down here, give ourselves plenty of room on the downside and also gave ourselves room for that market to rally up to, but not past its recent highs. So that was not a strategic uh, positioning in the strikes, it's just where the probabilities worked out. So we put our probabilities right there at 165 and 151, made us a very even condor on both sides. So the market has an even distance to run on both sides, but I think we'll be pretty safe. It also gives ourselves a little bit of room to the downside. But let's actually go to the trade tab so you can see where our probabilities are for this position. So again, as always, when we go to the trade tab, this is our actual position. No joke here, no fake trades. This is live trading that we do, live positions that we put on in the market. Again, we uh, take this position graph down. Here's our strikes in May. And let's widen this out with the number of strikes that we looked at. And what I wanna show you guys is the probability levels that we're working with here. So let me see if I can get both of them on here, great. 
So you'll notice that our first cell position right here is at the 151 on the put side, and I'll circle that right here, and that's at the 26 probability level. So there's about a 70% chance that the market will be above 151. And then I moved up here to about at the time that I sold this position, it was about the 19% uh, probability level, but right now it's sitting at about the 15% probability level. So that means that we're giving ourselves plenty of room between these two probabilities. Now if you take this probability here, 26, and you add it to the 15 or the 19 that we had here, that gives our total probability percentage of losing on this trade. So the 26 and 15 is about 41. So we're taking about a 60-40 bet on this trade right now. So that 60% chance of success, about a 40% chance of loss on this trade. Again, it's a high probability trade because it's in both directions. So we're taking in a lot of premium. If premiums were contracting, if the market hadn't sold off as much as it did, we might end up having to sell this iron condor too close. And so the market could rally out, rally or dip out of those ranges. So I feel pretty good about this trade. I like this trade. Iron condors are far and few between nowadays with high implied volatility. So this is a really good trade. All right, let's move on to some of the other ones. I'm going to go a little bit quicker through some of these credit spreads because they are all basically inside the same wheelhouse. So I lumped them all together here for you guys. But the basic idea with all of these credit spreads, I'll pick out a couple of them like UNG and MasterCard, and we'll look at those charts. But the whole idea with all of these credit spreads is that implied volatility was high in the underlying, so we don't want to trade any debit put spreads or debit call spreads. And we wanted to also kind of space out our positions. So you'll notice I have some calls, I have some puts, and so that's making me a little bit more even and balanced in my trading. And that's a lot of things that people don't do. They get very one direction on the market. You'll notice that I have a little bit more calls than I do puts in this case, but my overall portfolio is fairly balanced with deltas. So I don't have too many call positions. I don't have too many uh, bullish positions. I don't have too many bearish. I want to be fairly neutral. And as the market moves up and down, I want to take those positions off. So that's one thing I want to note on this. The other thing is always take a look at the width of the strikes and take a look at the credit that we received. So you'll notice in particular on MasterCard, the width of the strikes is only a dollar. And we always say we like to take in about a third of the width of the strikes, about 30 cents. Took in a little bit better than that on some, a little bit less than that on others. It was just whatever the pricing was. But again, the whole underlying idea with all of these vertical spreads that we sold, call spreads and put spreads for March and February, was that implied volatility in the underlying was very high and that we were taking a directional bet on the stock. So let's take a look at UNG. We sold the, one, uh, the 25, 26 call spread, a dollar wide, took in a 25 cent credit. And you'll wonder why do we sell the call spread versus the put spread? Well, let's go to the chart of UNG. And if you've been following any of the market moves, you'll notice that UNG has just had a huge parabolic move straight up. So in our case, implied volatility is at the 100th percentile. It's higher now than it's ever been before in its history. And so this means you absolutely have to be an option seller. You cannot be an option buyer. You'll definitely lose in this case. And we sold the call spread because we think that after this move, there should be some sort of downward movement in UNG before expiration. So again, we don't know when it's going to happen. It could happen today, tomorrow, the next day. But we think that at some point, either volatility and or UNG is going to move down before expiration. And that's the bet that we're making on the market. And you'll notice that it's a very high probability bet. Stock markets and ETFs and indexes don't run up like this all the time. They can't sustain this type of move very long. The other one I want to take a look at is MA, which is MasterCard. This is February contracts that we traded, the 8182 call spread. Again, taking a nice credit of around a third of the width of the strikes. But we'll take a look at MasterCard here on the chart as well. Take a look at where that position is. So here's MasterCard. Same thing, implied volatility kind of crashed. I don't think this pricing is right. Implied volatility was much, much higher on MasterCard. It was in the 80th percentile uh, earlier on Friday. So that pricing may be off on Thinkorswim. But you'll notice that it's actually starting to already move down. We do have earnings coming up. The stock just split. It had a 10 to 1 split. So pricing is a little bit less. People are starting to sell it off. So again, we're just taking the position above the market, assuming that we leave the stock where it is. It's overbought. It's very bloated and that it maybe will come back down as we get towards expiration and towards earnings. So again, just taking a position in the market, we know what our probabilities are, we know that we're trading the right side of implied volatility, 
You can't do anything more than that other than just make great positions and keep your trade size small. All right, so let's talk about the let's talk about the Chipotle Mexican Grill trade that we had. This is a hedge trade, so uh, I know I got a lot of emails about this as well. What we did here is we actually had a current hedge or a current position on Chipotle, a short call spread that we had sold originally that now has gone into the money. So everyone gets their panties in a bunch here now because the spread has gone into the money. But I'm going to show you the way that I hedge the position now because of the huge move down in Chipotle that we recently had. So what I did in this case, and I'll show you here, but I'll also show you on the pricing chart, is we actually went in and resold a new position above the market, and that's the 525, 520 call spread. And we took in a nice credit of $1.35. So we already had a put spread on that went in the money and we went back and sold this call spread. Now if you remember, if we keep the width of the strikes exactly the same as our put spread, similar to an iron condor that we have basically now on Chipotle, on Chipotle, then we actually don't have any additional risk in the trade, meaning that we don't increase any margin. Our risk in the trade does not increase at all because our width of the strike stays the same, but we take in more credit. So I had one person email me that said, hey Kirk, aren't you basically banking a loss? And no, you're not banking a loss, but if anything, if it does become a full loser, we took in free credit by adding this call spread to the position. We took in $135 of free premium, didn't cost us a dime. So it reduces our break even point, it reduces our overall risk exposure, and it also still leaves us an opportunity to make money on this trade. So let's go to Chipotle, we'll take a look at the actual grid here. You guys will see exactly what our positions are as always. So we have the positions here in February, and you'll notice that the calls or the put spread position is already in the money. And so you'll see here on the right-hand side that these puts are already in the money because Chipotle is trading at 492, and we had the 515, 510 put spread. So what we did is we went back in and we sold the call spread just above that level at 525 and 520. So that again allows us this nice window of opportunity that should the market rally back up, it gives us an opportunity to take profits around 515, 520 if Chipotle does happen to rally up. But at the end of the day, this spread has already lost a ton of value just in one day. We couldn't control what the market did, but we can reduce our loss by selling this call spread that doesn't cost us any additional risk. So if anything, if we still take max loss on this trade, we've reduced the cost basis of that max loss, therefore reducing our risk and therefore increasing the premium that we've received overall on this position. So again, that's how we take those trades that go into the money. Again, there's nothing you can do about this. You just get dumb luck and this is why you trade very small positions, but Chipotle just had a huge, huge run down. And again, we have plenty of time between now and expiration that Chipotle could easily rally back up to the 515, 520 level. That's not out of, a, out of the stretch of this stock moving. And given that earnings are coming up, that might actually happen. So we want to position ourselves to have a potential to make profit, but also take in a nice little premium on the way. All right, the last two positions down below are just straight vertical spreads that we traded. They're both call spreads on JPM and City. So going back to banking, we took some profits off on XLF, if you remember earlier in the video. But then going back to banking and trading the 4850 call spread for a buck and seven cents, and then the 5060 call spread, which is very wide, so we just traded one of those because they're a little bit expensive, in JP Morgan for 558, so a little bit over the mid price here. But again, the whole idea with these two positions in particular is that we wanted to take some sort of directional trade on the market here with these. Again, you'll notice that implied volatility is not above that 50th percentile, so we can't sell any type of vertical put spread or call spread or iron condor, but we did want to take a directional trade on both of these because they have been so oversold, Whoop. because they've been so oversold here in the past couple of weeks. Citigroup has just had a huge, huge drop in its price, so we think it should see some stability. Same thing with JP Morgan huge, huge drop in the price. So we should get a little bit of a bounce here. And again, that's all we're looking for with these debit call spreads. We want these stocks just to move up just a little bit and give us an opportunity to take a quick profit on the trade. So again, hopefully you guys really enjoy these videos. I know this was a long one. Thanks so much for sticking with me. Please 
ask any of your questions below in the comment section. I'll get back to these this weekend. But I hope you guys enjoy these going over the different strategies that we trade and all the different opportunities that are out there in the market right now. I know next week is going to be a huge, huge week for trading. So I encourage you to sign up for the free seven-day pass at optionalpha.com. See what we've got to offer. Happy trading.